It's an overcast day out there, but if we look at the satellite, down to the south we can see some fresh convective towers right in this area here in East Texas. That represents the nose of the tropical moisture down to the south and up to the north what we see here. This is all convective debris from storms down in South Texas. And there's a look at that activity. Obviously, it had its roots in an overnight MCS, and that's continuing to propagate towards the southeast through the San Antonio area. And we leave it this afternoon just south of San Antonio up towards the College Station area. But back to the west, very stormy in northern Mexico. And we've been talking about that trough extending through that area. That's a region of lower heights aloft and colder mid and upper level temperatures, which means a more unstable air mass. So very ripe environment for thunderstorms, and we should see that spreading into Texas over the next day. And on the heights and vorticity chart, there's that trough running all the way from the Great Lakes through the St. Louis area where we have a vortex passing through that region, and another vortex in Texas. So there's one, two, and of course another one way up to the north. And it looks like maybe even a third one down in Baja, California. So this whole area is a region of depressed heights, cool temperatures aloft, as I mentioned there. And on the other side, we've got ridging. Strong ridge extending from the Great Basin area up to Saskatchewan, Alberta, Montana, and then we have this other ridge out to the east. That's more something that we usually see all the time in the summer. That's an extension of the Bermuda High, and typically during June and July, we find that out there off the southeast coast. But with that ridging across the western and northwest U.S., temperatures coming up quite a bit. And there you can see it on the surface analysis. Let's move up to the north a little bit. And we can see 90s all the way up into Saskatchewan. Got 90 up there in Saskatoon. And 95 down in the southwestern part of the province. The record for the date up in Saskatoon is 96. It doesn't look like we're anywhere near that. And... Also, quite a bit of heat from Bismarck up to Minot, 97 in those areas, and that breaks the record for the date set in 1968 when it was 96. Also, a very hot day brewing in Nevada. We can see 103 there at Vegas, and they're not quite up to the daytime high. They're expecting 107 for today. That would be a couple degrees short of the record of 109. Likewise, can't see it, but uh, Desert Rock, which is near the Department of Energy test site there, 102 expected today, short of the 105, 106 records. However, Death Valley, right in this area, they're expecting 121 today. That will break the record for today of 120, but they're expecting to cool off to 120 tomorrow, which should not break the record for Friday. The temperatures will be coming up quite a bit, especially in this region right here. Salt Lake City expecting 100 for tomorrow, which would be the earliest 100 degree reading of all time for Salt Lake City. So pattern wise, the progression of polar fronts remaining up in Canada, certainly a cool day up there in Edmonton where we have temperatures in the 70s, and also a cool day along the Hudson Bay coastline, 30s and 40s from Churchill down to Fort Severn. Up to the north, pretty cold as we would expect this time of year, 
Lots of 30s, and I think the coldest temperature I'm seeing is 28 at Cambridge Bay and looks like 25 up there north of Dewar Lakes. And down to the south, we've got this stagnant boundary from Alabama down into Texas. That's kind of a reinforcement of all this cool air coming from these convective complexes, kind of bulking up that boundary as a front. Typically, those boundaries become diffuse over time, but with that trough coming out of New Mexico and Old Mexico, probably going to see more of the same going into this weekend. And with a boundary, when we have the convergence down to the south, that's always going to mean thunderstorm activity. So can we see that trough, that low pressure system in Old Mexico? Not really. I think I can pick out a little bit of a swirl in the cloud field right there. But really, we need to be looking at the water vapor imagery. One advantage of the water vapor imagery is it is sensitive to the clouds and weather systems in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And here we can see the motion up in New Mexico, El Paso area, coming out of the north towards the south in a different motion out there in Texas. So that kind of paints out the upper level trough, but we don't see the classic baroclinic leaf shape, the S shape, that kind of thing. And that's because that cloud field is dominated by all the convective debris in this area, kind of smudges out the patterns. And I guess maybe there's not a whole lot of humidity in the upper half of the troposphere. But certainly a lot of convective material out there, and likely as that trough ejects towards the northeast, we might see more of a classic presentation on the water vapor imagery. So going forward with the mid-level charts, some indication of that vortex right there. Looks like maybe another one out there over Baja, California. And then going forward into Friday and Saturday, let's get that going. You can see that swirl there in central Texas on the Edwards Plateau, the hill country, and that drifts out into the Dallas, Waco, and Austin area during the day on Saturday. So likely we're going to see an uptick in the probabilities of precip as that emerges. Looks like the Baja California low has kind of dissipated. But we're left with this other trough moving across northeast Texas on Sunday and into Arkansas and Oklahoma on Monday. Looks like it opens up a little bit and moves up into Missouri, Illinois around midweek. Very, very slow progression. And even around Thursday or Friday, it's still swirling up there around Chicago in Indianapolis. And finally, it opens up almost completely by next weekend over Pennsylvania. So man, eight days from there to there, what is that? Uh, 1,000 miles divided by eight, that's about 120 miles a day. So that's a movement of about five to seven knots. That's very slow for a weather system of that scale. But up to the north, the prevailing westerlies are still going. Let's run that back and take a look at that part of the system. So we start out with this big ridge right there, the jet running around the north part of that into the Great Lakes. Looks like our first big system coming into the northwest Friday into Saturday. So that's going to move up into the Canadian prairies, maybe some chances of thunderstorms going up in that region. Maybe some chase potential up there in North Dakota, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. That trough moves up pretty far north. Looks like a second one coming up from California there. That's embedded in the prevailing westerlies. So maybe some chances of rain there for Colorado Monday and Tuesday, and then moving up to the northern plains as that heads into Canada. And after that, just a couple of weak troughs moving through the flow. Let's see, we've got this other system next weekend. This is pretty far out, but it looks like the pattern is still kind of unsettled in the south central U.S. and still hanging on to that ridge in the Rockies going into the second week of June. And looks like more hot weather. Look at that big old 594 decameter high 
over Wyoming for the 14th. So this far out, this broad scale pattern here, that's very likely to actually be the case. So I'm expecting a continuation of this hot weather for the next week or two in the north central and northwestern U.S. and part of the Rockies. But with the flow turning northwest across the Great Lakes in the northeast U.S., looks like more cool weather for the northeast states. And, you know, that's been the trend for the past nine or ten months. They've been getting the lion's share of the cold air. Look at that system heading into New York around the 19th. Wow. So Ridge West, Trough East, and that always means cool in the eastern half of the country and hot in the western half. If we take a look at Europe, checking out the mid-level chart there, very high amplitude pattern. Look at that big old low pressure area off of Ireland, large cutoff high in Finland and Karelia, northern Russia out there. See that big 582 decameter high? That's, uh, that's going to mean some very warm weather for that region. And another little low out there around Ukraine. So the jet pattern running about something like that, and then just running that forward. Trough moving into France there, so maybe some rain or thunderstorms expected in that region. And then going into the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Looks like the patterns flatten out. We get the breakdown of that big upper level high across Finland, and just more of a kind of a split flow pattern going on in that region. And that's the chart this afternoon. Not really a whole lot going on except for this system in the UK. 986 millibar low out there south of Iceland, but that's about all that is going on for today. And that's about all I have for this edition of Forecast Lab. Just to let you know that for tomorrow, we're going to select a couple of supporters to receive some free books and software. So if you're not a supporter, here's the link. That will get you, of course, the private Monday stream, maybe some free additional videos once we get those put together, and of course, the chance at some free books and software, and the peace of mind knowing that you're supporting this program. And that's always very appreciated. So we'll see you for tomorrow's edition. Take care, and we will see you then. Bye-bye.